Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Look at you all. <laughs> Feels like the holodeck of the Starship Enterprise. <laughs> this is exactly the avatar course I would create. In Living Deliberately, I briefly outlined the content of four types of belief systems. Type one uh, contains mostly dogma, indoctrination, and controlling beliefs. Type two contains common sense beliefs. Type three contains scientific, fact-supported beliefs. And type four contains intentionally created beliefs, or what you know as primaries. Today I'm going to talk about the intentions that are involved in each of these four types of belief systems. First, what does it mean to believe? If you trace the word back to its roots, you'll find that it means to be comfortable with or satisfied with. The belief that a type one belief system is comfortable with and satisfied with is not always the same kind of belief that a type three belief system is comfortable with and satisfied with. We have an idiom in English for that different strokes for different folks. <laughs> and when I say, I believe you, what am I saying? I'm saying that I'm comfortable with what you told me or that I'm satisfied with what you told me. Truth and efficacy are not necessarily factors of why I believe something. I mean, some truths are very uncomfortable and hard for me to believe. Uh, some lies are easy for me to believe because they make me feel comfortable. <laughs> you, you've been there, huh? <laughs> if you tell me my mistakes are not my fault, that's easy for me to believe. <laughs> And if you tell me my mistakes are my responsibility, mm, that's uncomfortable and I'd rather not believe you. So I find it a bit of a revelation that belief has more to do with comfort than it has to do with truth. And any effort to find truth will likely take you out of your belief comfort zone. If you said to me, hey, there are three elephants in the parking lot, and it's a totally made up story, how am I going to process it? Well, part of my mind goes, wow, that's unusual. Three <laughs> elephants in the parking lot. And then another part of my mind says, well, it could happen. I mean, when we were in Daytona Beach, the Ringling Brothers Circus was moving out as we were moving in for the Wizards course. <laughs> and uh, the Ocean Center has a, a big freight entrance that they call the Elephant Door. Honest to God. <laughs> elephant Door. And just after the elephants were taken out of the elephant door, our sound truck drove in the elephant door. I mean, five minutes sooner and the elephants and the wizards would have run into each other. <laughs> so I've had that experience. And when you say, hey, there are three elephants in the parking lot, well, I check my experiences and I decide, 
Yeah, that could be. Yeah, that could be true. And there are three elephants in the parking lot. You see, in a type one belief system, yeah, it could be true amounts to verification. So I believe your story because it could be true. And I even pass the information on to someone else. Hey, Mikan, did you know there are 40 elephants in the parking lot? <laughs> now, I've been known to tease Mikan occasionally, and April Fool's jokes and that sort of thing. So she's going to receive my story about the 40 elephants in the parking lot with a lot of skepticism. Doesn't feel comfortable to be fooled. She goes, Sure, Harry. <laughs> well, would you believe three elephants? You see, maybe she's checking her experience now to see if that could be true. And as long as she's checking to see if it could be true, I'll tease her a little. And one of them stepped on your car. Now, the intention behind a type 1 belief system is to be right. And uh, type 1 belief that's very comfortable is, I am right and they are wrong. This is the intention behind war and strife. And it sets family against family, neighbor against neighbor. I am right and they are wrong. Type 1 believing is more or less taking an inventory of your memory and determining the plausibility of some statement. And as long as you come up with, yeah, it could be, and the source of the information is making you right, you will be persuaded. Persuasion in a type 1 belief system is based on the emotions connected with being right or wrong. That's the type one process of believing. Someone says something, it sounds plausible, and you get this little emotional surge because what you suspected was right really is right, or what you suspected was wrong really is wrong. This is also the formula for getting elected by a large group. <laughs> you say something, make it sound plausible, and stimulate some righteous emotion. Most political platforms consist of type one beliefs. Okay, let's move up a level to type two beliefs. See what it means to believe there. With type one believing, you check the record to see if a statement was plausible. But with type two believing, you don't have to check for memories because you already know. You know without looking. See, knowing has more certainty than remembering. How many times do you have to experience a cause and effect sequence before you know? I mean, how many times do you have to repeat an action always producing the same result before you can know without looking what the result of the action is going to be? You just know. That's a type two belief. Type two beliefs are common sense, and there's really no effort involved in believing them. You just know. If someone tells you they dropped an object on the floor, they dropped an object and it fell to the floor, you're gonna go, Doe, what did you expect? You, know? you don't have to check to see if it's plausible 
or if the person is making you right because you know that dropped objects fall to the floor. And now if someone were to say that he dropped an object and it fell up to the ceiling, <laughs> you're not going to feel that your righteousness is threatened. You, you'll just consider that the guy is some sort of a whack job, you know? <laughs> The intention behind type two beliefs is to conform and act rationally. And in this case, rationality is based on transparent beliefs that everyone pretty much agrees on. If you want to persuade someone of a type two belief, you appeal to their sense of conformity. Okay, let's move up another level to type three believing process. If you want to experience a complicated believing system, explore a type three system. The intention behind type three believes is prove it. And you're going to be, you're going to persuade someone by presenting facts that support your theory and disputing facts that don't support your theory. Now there's still this shadow of an urge to be right from type one. But type three is the realm of physical sciences and facts and hypotheses and propositions and suppositions and theories and especially measuring devices. <laughs> Did you know that there are measuring devices to measure how accurately other measuring devices measure? <laughs> it's a fact. The mantra of type three believing is, what evidence do you have for believing that? Now, a large part of type three believing is arguing over evidence. And the only way of settling a type three argument is with measuring devices. And even that doesn't always work. The type three process of believing is a factual investigation of the perception of a reality it's based upon transparent beliefs and assumed to be true. For example, two Harvard psychologists discovered that when a 110 volt shock is applied to the right side of a rat's cage, the rat moves immediately to the left side of the cage. And from the experiment, they were able to conclude that rats are intelligent enough to avoid being shocked. <laughs> now, after the experiment, one of the psychologists accidentally stumbled and touched the live electrodes. And responding to his screams, the other psychologist, instead of moving away, <laughs> grabbed the first psychologist And both of them were so severely shocked that they required medical attention. <laughs> Proving that a rat is smarter than two Harvard <laughs> psychologists. <laughs> Type three beliefs are based on scientific evidence which is based on measuring devices, which measure something that is assumed to be real. Science doesn't so much extend the frontier of human experience as it extends backward from the frontier of human experience. 
Anyway, even with its shortcomings, uh, I'm a big fan of type three beliefs because that's where you find the best power tools and heavy machinery. <laughs> I mean, why travel across space by changing consciousness when you can ride in a rocket ship? <laughs> Come on, you know? <laughs> the type three believing process is a maturation of the type one believing process and type two falls somewhere in between. So you have here the evolution of the believing process. You have a linear evolution of child, adolescent, adult, and you might think that's it, you know? Superstition evolving into the scientific method. Where else can you go? Have you ever noticed that when a process is close to reaching perfection, that there's often a sideways step that opens a whole new vista? Um, we don't just evolve linearly. Sometimes we mutate sideways. When the electronic vacuum tube had evolved to near perfection, there was a sideways step into the transistor. And when propeller-driven aircraft had almost reached perfection, there was a sideways step into jet propulsion. And when reptilian scales had thickened and reached their maximum insulation value, there was a sideways step into feathers. And feathers, which were developed as a protection against the cold, took a sideways step into flight. Well, avatar is a sideways step into a type four belief system. And the intention in a type four belief system is create deliberately. And the sideways step is what makes avatar different from other practices. I mean, many people, uh, positive thinkers, inspirational speakers, have speculated that you could create an experience simply by believing in it. In fact, many contend that's what re people are really doing all the time. And the crux of a type four belief system is that the process of believing comes before the process of experiencing. See, type one, two, and three belief systems look at the past experience that determine present believing. Now we're talking about a paradigm in which present time believing determines future experience. This really reshuffles the deck. And the whole concept of believing in something because you're comfortable with it just goes out the window because you cannot be comfortable with something that you haven't created yet. I mean, the definition of belief in type four belief system is closer to create forward rather than to be comfortable with. I mean, the whole believing process has changed. Section two of Avatar is a demonstration that belief can create experience. It's quite revolutionary. The believing process has taken a sideways step from passive observation and deduction about what already existed in the past into an invitation to create what you would like to experience in the future. And when you learn to do this, not just talk about it, the skill is priceless. You learn how to create a belief with enough certainty that the experience actually arrives. Wow. Well, okay, this avatar walks into a bar. <clears throat> 
And he says, things always work out for me. And the type three scientist taking out his power measuring device, which also samples and weighs, says, do you have any evidence to believe that things always work out for you? And the avatar says, nope, things just always work out for me. <laughs> and the type two rationalist, you know, he's carrying a whole list of secondaries. <laughs> says, do you have any reason to believe that things are going to work out for you. And the avatar says, nope, <laughs> things just always work out for me. And both the type two and the type three get very agitated. Yeah. That's crazy, they say. Totally delusional, unproven, unsupported, no confirmation, unjustified, you have no evidence or reason to believe that. And the avatar says, not yet. <laughs> you see, the avatar has realized that basing her beliefs on the past is like driving a car by watching where you've been. <laughs> With the type four believing process, we're talking about awakening source beings who within a very broad parameter can make primaries that restructure their own minds and create future reality future experiences. Now that's a concept that may take getting used to. Um, a source being who can restructure his or her own mind. Is your mind controlling you or are you controlling it? And if you're entirely new to this concept, the first question you need to answer is, who does my mind belong to? <laughs> and the next question is, who decides what I believe? Do the past events of the physical universe control my mind, or do I control my mind? My mother, uh, bless her heart, could sometimes be an impatient woman. Was your mother ever impatient with you? <laughs> My mom would say, uh, as I hovered in the doorway with snow blowing into the kitchen, either go out or stay in. This, of course, presented me with a problem. <laughs> should I go out or should I stay in? And finally, as I stood there with the door open, snow blowing past, my mother would give her final direction. Make up your mind or I'll make it up for you. <laughs> Make up your mind or I'll make it up for you. That is pretty much what the universal mother is saying to all of us. Make up your mind or I'll make it up for you. So who's making up your mind? Are you living deliberately, making up your own mind? How much avoidable suffering can you save yourself from in the future by restructuring your own mind today? I mean, when people really understand the consequence, consequences of what you're doing here, 
I mean, they're going to drop everything to do Avatar. Millions of people are trapped in comfortable beliefs. And these comfortable beliefs will continue to self-sabotage their lives, their jobs, their health, their relationships. And they're blaming events that they believe they can do nothing about. This is all called victim consciousness. So discovering that most difficulties are the result of your own comforting beliefs and that you can do something about them is a huge step. I mean, it's a discovery that requires effort and courage to confront. But you can't become a basketball star by reading about basketball. And you can't become an avatar by reading about avatar. You have to do the training. And I was going to say, and boy, is it worth it. But since you guys now have firsthand experience, let me ask you, is doing Avatar worth it? Thank you. Explore and understand the relationship between your beliefs and your experiences. Discover more about orders of belief systems with the Belief Management Mini Course. Ask an Avatar Master or visit avatarepc.com.